Hello, I hope this video finds you well. This is the fourth video in our set of videos where we are building this simple web page where we have a piano scale generator. Um, and we're at the stage right now where we can, if I pull this up, this is um, our last stage where essentially we have it mapped out. We can set major or minor and we can pick the key. So I'm going to pick C minor. And in the last video, what we did was the logic for generating the notes in the scale. So if I hit submit, those are the notes that are in in the C minor scale from for one octave, so from C to C. And again, this might be tricky if you don't have musical experience, but one of the th key things I want you to kind of develop as a, a programmer um, is that, or a designer, is that sometimes you have to kind of get enough knowledge about a topic so that you can do the code and not get lost in the details. Um, and that's, that's a skill. So we now know that if I choose C minor, scale, I need to highlight those keys on the keyboard. Um, but before we do that, I'm just going to put an orange mark on every single key and then clear them away. And in our last video, we're going to put it on specific keys. And with that, let's dive in. Okay, so what I've done here is I've actually taken um, Piano Scale 3, which is our last video, and I've copied it into Piano Scale 4 and I've saved it. And that's what we're looking at here. So currently this behaves just like Piano Scale 3. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go to my repository, which is my GitHub repository where it's stored, and I'm going to do some cutting and pasting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll down here and you'll find a whole section that's been commented out. Um, and this was essentially coded by me just to put the, the orange marks. Now you see how it says blue marks. That's because initially I was going to make them blue, but I changed it to orange. But what this should do, if I copy this in, what this should do is it should actually it should actually go and put orange marks on all of the keys. So let's give that a try. So I'm going to come in here. And now the next question is, where do I put this? Well, we know that this draws the white keys and this draws the black keys. And so what I'm going to do is next, I'm going to put an orange mark on all of them by pasting that in there. And let's change this from, from blue marks to orange marks, just because. Now, in my first video, I didn't actually explain too much about the canvas, and I and I have another video that's kind of added added at the end, which goes over canvas really briefly. But let's just take a second and understand it. So when you're looking at a canvas on on a on a web page, the top left corner is zero zero, and it goes positive x, and positive y is down, and this is really important. Whenever you're drawing anything on a canvas or a page as a programmer. The top corner, left corner is 0, 0, and it's positive x, and it's positive y down. And that's for a variety of reasons. So when I'm actually coding with this, what happens is every time I want to draw something, I do this at the start. Notice what I've done is I've gotten the canvas um, by ID. And that's, again, back up here. We've given the canvas this ID, key canvas, and we access it. And then I create what's called the CTX variable, which is getting the context. So that's the context we want to draw. And this CTX variable is what actually does the drawing for us. So we always have to begin a path and end a path. So when we begin a path, it will set the colors and do all the different things that we need to do. So we think of it like grouping. So this is the white keys. And I begin a path and I draw a white rectangle for every one. Because I haven't specified color, it's assuming that it's just drawing a black line. So I'm going to do a rectangle where the top left corner is 5, 5, so x, y. And then it's going to be a width of 20 and a height of 100. So if I take this here and I zoom in real closely, what that's going to do is that's this first rectangle here. And it's going to be, if we come back to this, let's just look. I know that I want it in position 5-5. Five, five. So I come here. So it's 5-5. Five, five, that's the top left corner. And it's 20 long and 100 down. And so what happens is I begin the path and then I say what I want to do with all of these different objects that I've drawn. And that's what draws them. Then when I do the black keys, I start the path again. I set my fill style to black. This is all the black keys. And again, it's the function that I need to kind of understand and do a little reading about to know what these four parameters mean. And then I fill the text. Right. And now when I begin a path, this is going to be for the orange marks. And so what the orange marks are is essentially I've mapped out the x, y position and the size. So each of the orange marks for the white keys is going to be 10 by 10. And this is the position, the x and y position. And each of the orange marks on the black keys is going to be 6, 6, and that's the x and y position. So notice how the y position never changes. 
the y position never changes, but the x does because we're moving across the page. So if I save this and reload this, there we go. We now have an orange mark on every one of these keys. And that means now that I can draw an orange mark wherever I want to. But when I hit submit and do pick a scale and hit submit, I'm going to have to clear all of these and then just draw selected ones. So what I want to add next is I want to add a function called clear, called clear marks. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come into my code here and then come down to the bottom here and I'm going to make a function and it's called clear marks. And I'm going to open a brace and close it. Again, really important with functions, notice it's a lowercase letter that I spelled it with. I've used camel case, so capital M. Um, this is Java, JavaScript. They tend to use camel case for functions. This function takes no parameters because there's nothing in there, and it doesn't return anything, it won't return anything. So what do we want to do? Well, again, to draw, I need to do this ctx.begin path. Now you might wonder why can I just do ctx begin path whereas up here I had to actually get the variable I had to get the object right there get that canvas um, and and go through and, and, and then do this well the reason why is because the scope of these variables scope is where variables are visible so because I'm declaring this above the function and outside of a function inside the general area this variable c and ctx are both visible within this function, so I don't have to actually access them again. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ctx.fill style, and I'm going to make the fill style white. Because essentially what I want to do is I want to take all of these orange keys on the white on the white keys, I want to take all these orange marks and I want to fill them with a white rectangle. And so I'm going to come, oh, pardon me, I'm going to come back into here. And now I'm going to draw, I'm going to take this exact same. Remember these are all the white, these are all the white key orange marks. I'm going to come down here and I'm going to paste them in. And then the last thing I want to do, let's just pull this back and tab this in nicely. And then the last thing I want to do here is I want to actually do the fill. You have to actually tell it what to do with this because you might, you know, this, this tells the program what you want to actually do or where you want to position your rectangles or your shapes, and this tells you what you want to do with it. So I want to take all of these shapes and fill it with white. And so now if I save this, nothing's going to happen because, if we refresh this, nothing's going to happen because I never invoke that function. So let's just, let's just do this right now. So let's come into our, our calculate function here. And what I'm going to do inside the calculate function is I'm going to actually invoke clear marks. Because before I actually draw the marks, which we'll do in our last video, I need to clear what's on there. So I'm just going to say clear marks. And so what this does is when I enter the calculate function, which it does when I click the button, we then go into clear marks and it runs this. So let's save this and let's give this a whirl. So there are the keys. And when I hit submit, all of the white marks should disappear. And there they go. They're gone. So now we have to do this with the black marks. So again, now the temptation here might be to do this, and let me show you. I'm going to take the black orange marks, and there they are, and I'm going to paste them just below the white keys. There they are. So these are all the rectangles that are for those orange marks on the black keys. Oh, save this. Let's reload this. And now watch what happens when I hit submit. I get these white holes because I'm, I'm drawing the rectangle again, but remember, when I was setting all the context and I was setting the fill style, I set it to white. So what I need to do is I need to actually set the fill style to black. So what that means is I'm going to actually fill it once I'm done the white keys. And now I'm going to do a new set of instructions. So I'm going to say ctx dot begin path. And now I'm going to say ctx dot fill style equals black. And then I come to the bottom here and I see ctx dot, ctx dot fill. And if I save this now and come back into our piano scaler, reload, I have all the orange marks, and now they all disappear. And so there's so many interesting things here. You know, we're, we're building this clear marks as a function. It's this idea with the canvas that, you know, you can draw a shape and then draw another shape over top of it and it goes away. Um, and that's all we're going to do in this video.
I say that as I hit 10 minutes. In our last video, what we're going to do is we're going to now draw the logic or write the logic in here that only highlights the correct keys. If you've been sticking with us through this, way to go. And if you have any questions, comments, anything like that, please don't hesitate to reach out. Take care.